Camelback. It's another hike. What's cool about this place is you can wander off the trail and it's not uh, it's not that difficult to wander off the trail and to get to these places where no one is around. It just feels like you're actually out away from everybody. I wrote three poems uh, on this hike. Let's read them. Life is in the letting go, the unraveling of the self. By practicing awareness, it becomes addictive. Practicing awareness becomes addictive. Maybe it's the final addiction. I know, I just uh, stopped reading the poet poem. The poet. Who's the poet? Who's the poem? This is it. No, but practicing awareness itself becomes addictive because it just, I, I don't know, at a certain point maybe it's just you're ready to practice awareness, you're ready to unravel illusions. Illusions become so painful that they're just no fun anymore. I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, waking up, being born again, there's all kinds of names for it. Anybody who claims any of that stuff is met with suspicion. Why would you claim it? But at the same time, you're motivated to transmit your experience. You're motivated to help. I think our na our true nature is to be of service, wanting to help. So if you find something that works for you, it's just natural that you would want to share it. And it's, it's just so interesting because we live in a land of, of just fractured selves of people who are spinning out of control with division and anger and society is like digging its te tentacles, ten technicals, tentacles, tentrals, fingers. Anyway, let's try to get through this poem. Life is in the letting go, the unraveling of the self. By practicing awareness, it becomes addictive. After so many lifetimes of chasing illusions, running like rats through addiction's angry cage, finally reality itself becomes addicting, seeing past the illusions we've spun about ourselves through drama and conflict. But we are the screen unaffected by the film. The play of life dances across our awareness, and when we attach to any of it, we suddenly find ourselves in bloody bumper cars, playing dangerous games with ghosts. But when we remember we are merely the screen, we can let the film unspool itself and allow pure light to fill the entirety of what we are. Wisdom is knowing we are nothing, and love is knowing we are everything, both of which are the same thing. Awareness is addictive because it unwraps the painful illusions of self we've been protecting and propping up like Weekend at Bernie's. The spirit becomes Benjamin Button and years fall away. Lifetimes actually being born again into the now. I borrowed some concepts from this guru I was listening to this morning uh, for that. The one about the film and the screen. The guru, I can't remember his name. It's a complicated name, sir. He wrote I Am That, which is an incredible book. And it's all about just practicing awareness and and seeing through the illusion of self. So I borrowed that, um, the screen and film thing, because that's, that's it. I mean, life is a film. You know, it, once you've lived long enough, it doesn't take too, you see the passing changes, everything's changing all the time, and if you attach yourself to anything as it goes by, that's kind of a painful experience, generally speaking, whereas we are the screen uh, that's what awareness is, the consciousness. Something about us is unchanging through the time when we were a child till wherever we are now. There's a constant. And it's unspeakable. You can only sort of point in the direction of all these ultimate truths or whatever. And you always sound like maybe it's, it's a tough one to talk about because you don't want to come off sounding high and mighty or spiritual or whatever, but... I was thinking about that. I was listening to another friend make a video and he was like, I don't want to be preachy and nobody wants to be preachy. But at the same time, if something's working for you and you're finding freedom in it and you're finding peace in a world of just insanity, I don't know, do you just like keep it to yourself and not sort of speak on it, not try to inspire others to find a certain amount of peace through just practicing awareness and forgiveness. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, what was the other thing about that poem? The spirit becomes Benjamin Button in years fall away lifetimes, actually, because 
you just do feel completely new, renewed on a spiritual level. That's the other thing. It's like when you're a kid and you just, everything's a discovery. Kind of gain that back, that sense of wonder in a way. Even as the ego is dying and you feel a little strange. Here's another poem. In the land of fractured selves, you yourself a fractured self. Poetry, the only adequate weapon to self-expression for a self that doesn't exist. For after all, what to express but the truth that needs no expression. And yet people are garbled in suffering through the garbage disposal of life, grinding the illusions out of them. It's hard not to want to say that it will be okay. Your enemy is you turned inside out and the monster attacking you in your mind needs your attention to survive. That's kind of what I was saying. I like the line, uh, it's hard not, uh, let's see, your enemy is you turned inside out, loving your enemy, realizing that, uh, you know, Eckhart Tolle calls them thought forms, other people call them demons, whatever it is, our battle is with principalities, not with flesh and blood. There's all kinds of people who talk about this no self stuff. It's hard being a no self making a video. All right, and then when I got to the top of Camelback Mountain, at the top of Camelback, sometimes it's like a club up here, loud conversations with Russian businessmen where the four on the floor beat is implied more than heard. Other times it's tranquil and one can tune into birds in the distance and insects whirling by. The sun beats down on the whole city and suburban desert sprawl and people take selfies, yoga poses on the edge of madness. That's a future book title. Try to sneak in a moment of meditation before making your way back down the mountain into the day right after remembering that gratitude is the answer to everything. And in the confusion of waking up or not waking up, suffering, overthinking, no matter where you are, it's like being grateful for everything is, uh, the answer and I suppose when you really fully wake up when you're fully not operating from thought forms or demons and you're operating from awareness gratitude is innate is natural you don't have to practice gratitude I think you just are gratitude you don't have to try to love you just are love you can't help but love your enemy you can't help but love everyone and everything. You realize everyone who is is acting in a way that offends you, they're just probably victims of programming and all that. But it's not it's like we're all one. The, the thing that is constant in me is the thing that is constant in you. The ultimate reality past the play of the film going across the screen. The unchanging reality, reality itself, is that we are one in the same. That's pretty awesome. And so anything you're worrying about, don't worry about it. It's not even real. Peace.